Happy Saturday, everybody. I hope everybody's doing fantastic. Uh, we're ready for another storyboard jam session coming to you live. Excited. We're going to be talking about building worlds and world building for the storyboard artist. Anywho, let's get this party started. And uh, we got some friends uh, joining us, but we're, let's go ahead and get the show on the road. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? I hope you're having a fantastic weekend and your Saturday has been off with a bang and you're enjoying yourselves and uh, just enjoying a, a beautiful weekend. Uh, I got Yazalai. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for joining in. Uh, cool to see you uh, hanging out. Happy you can make it onto the live stream, uh, Yazalai. So everything going well with you? What are you working on? Are you working on some projects? What do you got cooking? Drop it into the chat. So uh, while you're texting that over to me, uh, Yazla, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce the show. So good evening, everybody. My name is Paul Anjali, and I'm a live action storyboard artist. I created this channel uh, whew, one more week, six months ago. Can't believe so much time has passed. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I created this channel to um, share my journey and processes with you as a storyboard artist. I've had the opportunity to work in a bunch of different disciplines. And uh, I used to also teach as an instructor, a college instructor, and I thought it would be fantastic to create a YouTube channel uh, to share uh, my journey and processes with you and go back to teaching a little bit here on YouTube. Uh, so consider myself as your uh, storyboard YouTube mentor uh, for those of you just getting into uh, storyboarding and, and learning. So uh, besides creating the channel for, for friends like you, um, you know, who, who watches the channel? You know, uh, I, I tend to make the material and the, and the content on this channel uh, for somebody who is an artist out there that is super interested in getting into storyboarding, whether it be for feature film, uh, whether it be for live action and or excuse me, live action film, feature animation, uh, animation, comics, uh, videos, corporate videos, you know, uh, just that production pipeline for you. I've worked in a lot of different areas and um, today I'm sort of honed in on to the, uh, the live action part, but uh, I have a wealth of knowledge to be able to share with you friends out there. So if you're somebody that's trying to get into storyboarding, uh, I invite you to come and uh, subscribe to the channel. Also, if you're a storyboard artist and you're trying to lift up your game and uh, get better at your craft, get better at your drawing abilities, your storytelling, your visual storytelling and, and how you perceive film and things like that, I invite you also to subscribe. Or if you're just somebody that just loves films, animation, comics, wants to see a storyboard artist just doing their thing, uh, I invite those folks too to come and check out the channel and just uh, some people just like hanging out with somebody drawing and having somebody there. Uh, I also created the channel because I, I wish I had a mentor when I first got started into visual storytelling, uh, somebody that I can bounce ideas off of and chat with and I hope I'm there for you and uh, appreciate everybody coming back. And you know, first I just I have to say it is just thank you. Thank you for th taking the time to support the channel by subscribing. Thank you for taking the time to watch the videos on this channel. I, I, it blows my mind how many people on a daily basis are watching the channel, watching these videos. So I am hoping that you are getting the most value out of the content that I'm producing. Right now it's been specifically all live streams. This is live stream number 72. Uh, I've had a, a lot of shorts I've put out of my, my drawing ability and I'm excited to introduce uh, my video selection that will be uh, coming out shortly. Um, and uh, I have some plans on a, a weekly video so we can sort of en encapsulate some of the training and uh, get it into uh, bite-sized pieces so you're not uh, I know a, a lot of these live streams are ranging about two hours uh, as I'm hosting them. But I want to make, uh, I love the live stream. It gives me the opportunity to hang out with you friends, chat with you. You can ask questions and, and it makes it a little bit more interactive than just watching a video and waiting for somebody to get back to you on a, a, a you know, a message in the, in, you know, at the end of the video, you know. And uh, so I really appreciate you uh, 
hanging out with me, helping me build this channel We're well beyond a thousand subscribers right now. So thank you so much. That means a lot to me. I, you know, I, in the back of my head, it'd be great to be able to do more of this full time and not just a few times during the week. So that's up to you. So I'm going to continue giving you some great content and uh, some great thinking of uh, helping you to get where you want to go. And I, I do appreciate all the support. So thank you, friends. Really appreciate it. Okay, so let's check over to the chat, see who we have hanging out with us tonight. So um, I got Yazlai who is hanging out. Uh, Yazlai is back again, and then I got uh, Mr. Zach Smith. What's going on, Zach? Hey, Paul, Zach here uh, from Australia. Uh, finally here for a live. All right, woo, you made it. Uh, how's everything going in Australia? How, how is your weather today? How's your weather going on over there? I, I'm uh, over here on the East Coast, and... Uh, over here in central Pennsylvania, and uh, you know, over here for me, it's 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 been it's been really weird, man. It, it, the weather's been weird. We finally got out of the snow. Uh, it's, it's been cold, 28 degrees. Oh man, Whew. maybe I, I maybe have to get to Australia. I know my youngest son has this dream of going to Australia, so um, looking forward uh, to possibly uh, doing that. So uh, one of these days, that'd be awesome. So uh, Yazalai says, I'm designing a few characters for a short story, but also sketching to unwind this week. I went back to college and my schedules are all messed up lately. Oh, no, that's horrible. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I, I remember when I was teaching college, it was, it was very interesting being on the opposite side of the desk. And, uh, you know, I had a unique opportunity where I was starting a, a small little animation company. And one of the, my buddies that I worked in another company with, he invited me to say, why don't you start teaching? And uh, so I, I took him up on his offer and started teaching at that time. And that was a lot of fun. I had a, a good time doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, so I hope you get everything straightened out with school, Yasalai. Um, are, are you going to an art college or just a, a you know, regular uh, four-year college? What, what are you working on? So. And it's great to hear that you're working on some uh, short stories and some character designs. So maybe tonight's topic on world building, maybe uh, give you some hints on helping you out and get you in the right direction. And then Zach uh, wrote in here, looking to update my portfolio. Hey, listen, uh, I haven't done a portfolio uh, a live stream yet or a video on portfolio making. Maybe that's, that's on my list of my to-do list Uh you know, I've, I've been asked, uh, I know Maria asked about drawing cars. Maybe we'll do that in one of the future uh, sketching after hour sessions. I know I was uh, Blissful Soul asked for a, a, a per perspective, uh, a little quick little course or how to that we did uh, this past Thursday. And some of that work we'll be talking about today and we're world building. So uh, it'll be fun to do. But uh, yeah, good luck with your portfolio. You know, I'd love to see your, your work, Zach, and see what you're working on. That'd be awesome. And thanks for taking the time out of uh, the weird time zone change for you uh, to be able to, to, to pipe in and, and be a part of the live stream. So welcome, my friend. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, and I look forward to, uh, you know, learning and seeing more of your portfolio. That'd be great. So if you're new to the chat, friends, uh, drop your name in the chat. I like to see who, you know, who we're talking to and, you know, anything I can be helpful to you. Uh, just uh, blurt it out in the chat. It's uh, this is dynamic. It's interactive. It's not just me talking to the screen. Uh, we're going to get in and draw some stuff and have some fun and sharing some tips and tricks. So I do come to you three times a week right now on right now currently because I've got a bunch of things on Tuesdays uh, going forward for a little while. So on Mondays is our storyboarding mastering the basic series. So if you're interested in the how to's or tutorial based instruction, you know, that might be the uh, live stream you want to join on. You know, I feel free to join all the live streams throughout the week, but that one's catered to the how-to and knowledge base of uh, storyboarding. You know, primarily uh, we've done everything from how, how to create a shot list, uh, different camera lenses, different camera angles, moving the camera. We've gone from a, a, a story script and how to break down the script all the way through to animatic that includes thumbnails and roughs. Uh, we've talked to, we, we started getting into software and how to use Photoshop uh, to do layer, uh, you know, uh, layer comps. We've done, uh, you know, just all different series of, of trainings there. And then on Thursdays, I host my sketching after hours uh, 
you know, series there. And sketching after hours is sort of like our happy happy time. And and uh, you know, get your favorite beverage of choice. And uh, you know cup of tea, cup of coffee or whatever, and hang out with me on Thursday nights and we do sort of our sketching. So last Thursday, um, Blissful Soul asked to go over a perspective. So we went over one, two, and three point perspective, as well as not just the, the physical drawing of it, and then also went digitally and how to use Photoshop to create uh, grid, you know, um, you know, grid panels and, and, and grid layouts uh, for your storyboards. Um, so that was a fun little uh, exercise too, but I, I, I can't say it enough. It is so important to uh, you know, be, be uh, sketching all the time. Take your time, sketch like crazy, you know. Uh, I, usually, I love these, these are Canson um, eight and a half by 11 uh, sketchbooks. I love these things, they're hard bound. Uh, I sketch in them all the time. If not, you know, uh, have some fun, you know. You know, even for me, I was like just doodling Beetlejuice. I was so excited with the new Tim Burton Beetlejuice movie. I was like, I gotta draw Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice, man. But, uh, and by the way, Michael Keaton, I know you're a big fly fisherman. So uh, give me a call sometime when you fly fish together. <laughs> That'd be awesome, you know. I, I know he does business out here in Pennsylvania, so that would be sort of cool to do. But uh, moving on from Michael Keaton, uh, you know, you know, you want to be doing your, your sketches all the time. And I, and I think it's so important to, to have fun and just, just be sketching all the time and, just, just have fun with these sketches, and uh, I, I and, uh, and if you need to go learn a little bit more about, uh, like even even here, here's a bunch of thumbnail storyboards and stuff like that, very cartoony in this one, but uh, yeah, take the time, put those sketches into your sketchbook, you know, see where it goes. Here's a bunch of different action poses, just you know, just doing different drawings and, and thumbnails, and you can sort of see how the thinking and Boy, this is a lot of work in here. Let's see what else I got cooking in this book. Just having fun. Even, man, I even haven't done it a lot, but I even drew Mickey Mouse in there. How about that? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's always important to keep those sketchbooks. Have fun with it. Learn as much as you can. Keep practicing and uh, have some fun. So I usually sketchbook in a uh, in a hardbound book or on a copy paper, but join me on those Thursdays sketching after hour sessions. Lots of fun. Uh, sometimes I just sketch and we pick different topics from dinosaurs to, to animals to faces to body types and structures and <coughs> to different things there. And then on Saturdays, like days like today, we have our storyboard jam session. And tonight, we're going to be focused on world building. I've done many videos right now, uh, and it's sort of, I've done everything from, you know, looking at movies I like from uh, Home Alone to Alien to, uh, gosh, what else have we done? Tarzan, uh, Car Chases. Uh, we've done a whole bunch of series of horror, you know, whether it be the, uh, you know, Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Headless Horseman, Vampire. We've done all sorts of different storyboard sequences together and, and having fun. So if any of those sound interesting to you, please join me on those days, Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and uh, enjoy doing these uh, sort of impromptu live sessions. So join up if you haven't joined before. And then also too, like I said, there, this is number 72. So if you want to go back in time for the last six months, we've got, uh, including uh, today's uh, live stream, that's 72 live streams of two hours each. You know, and don't don't be shy. If you need to fast forward right through them, that or watch a little bit and pause and come back to it later. Um, so there's a lot of content on there for you to review. Just go to my uh, YouTube channel, and you can see it under both the uh, mastering and you know storyboarding, mastering the basics. You can see it on the sketching after hours as well as the um, the uh, storyboard. Uh, jam sessions, and then I got a bunch of shorts, and uh, I look forward to to bringing those videos uh, to you. So, cool. Uh, Yasli says, I am a law student. Once uh, I start working, I'll save money to go abroad and study animation and design. I'm from Peru. Peru. Cool. Awesome. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, my, my eldest son, he's, he's studying... I, I, he's on the fence right now if he's going to go into to law, but he's a, but more of environmental law. Uh, he's he's working hard at that. He's uh, 
at university right now in uh, freshwater marine biology. And I don't know if he was going to do a minor in law or how he wanted to do uh, that. But uh, that's fantastic. And Peru is a beautiful country as well. I have a lot of Peruvian friends. So very cool. And then uh, Zach is from Australia. Very cool. Okay, let's get into world building. Okay, so let's uh, go down to Little Polly. Boop. And then let's uh, get our Photoshop screen a little bit. Let's get this cleaned up a little bit. Doop. Put that right there. Move that bad boy over. Let's let's move that over like that okay how does that look friends that looks a lot better very cool okay so you're probably asking hey Polly, why what do i need to know as, as a storyboard artist about world building building worlds well let me break it down to you friends um <clears throat> i think it's super important uh to have a great world and on a lot of projects i've worked on um, usually you have concept designers uh, creating some uh, content uh, uh, concept boards or maybe there's some mood boards or some concept art or character art but sometimes there's nothing there yet and you're reading the script for a film uh, or a cartoon or an anime feature animation and, and, and nothing's created yet especially like uh, independent films and where there's not a lot of budget and things like that and you're might be asked to you might be called up uh, up to the plate to be able to you know uh, at times hey Polly I, I put this together uh, you know what what would the world take take to take the the the, the shooting script and, and play with this and what type of world you come on until so we have a world to be working with a little bit before we bring in some concept artists or whatever and you're sort of uh, pre you know pre pre production uh, on, on a project and uh, you're partnered up with. Uh, Possibly the director, who I'm a couple, just a few people, and you're sitting there going, "Okay, what's this world look like? How do we, how do we play with this world, and what do we need to do uh, to, to to make this world come alive?" You know, and so you need to have some experience in drawing and in creating these worlds, sort of as a concept designer, as a character designer in a few, few ways, um, and flush it out a little bit. It doesn't mean unless you are doing some. I have friends out there that are doing. Uh, some some concept boards and you know they're putting together you know uh, some some of the the key points in the film and they're doing some amazing storyboard work where it's fully rendered and it just blows your mind and you're like wow that's some fantastic work uh, because usually most of the work we see is is just pretty much line art some uh, some quick blacks and some quick value on on those those shots as you're going through because you have a couple hundred you know. So many, maybe you know, anywhere from a couple hundred to a thousand shots here you're putting together for a sequence. Um, but uh, you know, sometimes you just need to be able to uh, do that. Uh, you know, that little bit of that world building. So here in this shot here, you can sort of see um, a little bit of world building here, where we have uh, the ship and. Uh, we have some uh, foreground uh, astronauts. This astronaut has some sort of uh, device on his, the top of his hand flexing up and you have this ship in the background that's uh, going to uh, land. So, you know, you're sitting there going, oh, we need to be able to build these worlds and, and have some fun with it. So that's what we're talking about tonight. How do we build these worlds? We're gonna build some worlds together and have some fun. Um, Cool. Zach says it's Sunday, 3.02 p.m. East Coast of Australia. We are a day, a day ahead of the U.S. A bit rainy today, but normally sunny most of the time. Definitely come over. You'll love it. All right. That's cool. Yeah, no, I, I love traveling. My wife and I have traveled all, a lot of places in the world. Uh, you know, my son's trying to put together a... a a trip to South Africa where we've got, a, we've got a few things cooking but Australia is definitely on the list and I got to definitely help my youngest son uh, get over there uh, I, I used to work uh, at a uh, you know in conjunction with the uh, the animal planet and I I had a I had an opportunity I didn't I didn't get to meet him but I was supposed to meet Steve Irwin uh, before he passed a long time ago and uh, that would have been a great experience I was working in interactive television and uh, that would have been a, a fun fun uh, 
you know, deal. And, I, and the company I was working for, uh, they were it had a partnership with the the Discovery Channel, and uh, that was you know, as that, that was at the infancy of the Discovery Channel, and uh, that would have been a huge mind blowing experience to be able to meet uh, Steve Irwin. That would have been cool. So, but anyway. Uh, Glad it's good. I know it's it's raining over here, so not very much different than uh, Australia and the uh, over here on the east coast of the U.S. So anyway, uh, okay, let's talk about um, world building, okay? And, and why do we world build? And 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 uh, we talk about the audience, you know. And let's talk about put it in the context of, of film and filmmaking and having fun with that. So. Let me go to, to Big Polly here again. So let's talk about this, you know, and uh, have some fun. Um, we love going to the movies. Um, I know with streaming and other services here on YouTube uh, and other services, you know, or, you know, streaming services, whether it be uh, Netflix, uh, you know, Amazon Prime, Hulu, uh, Roku, there's so many, you know, Disney Plus, you know, all the different aspects of streaming services. But you know what? I, I, I grew up, you know, uh, you know, having them, you know, used to black and white TV, uh, only so many channels, uh, eventually into, you know, color, finally got to get a color TV, you know, and then you're, you're sitting there, you know, going to the movies. We went to the drive-ins a lot, which is a, a outside theater. And then, you know, you went to the, 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 the movie theater and then, you know, the big mall scenario popped into play and you can have so many multiplex of films. There's something about going to the movies. It's just a whole heck of a lot of fun. And uh, ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to see my name up there in, in, on, the, on those title credits rolling up at the end. And, uh, and uh, you know, and I know a lot of you as well, you know, want to see your name on that uh that hit animated show or, or whatever and say, yeah, I did that. That is cool. Um, so we, we build, we, we go to the movies to be entertained. And, uh, you know, uh, films can be done in different ways. Uh, we we want to be entertained. Sometimes we want to be pulled out of our world and enter into another world, you know. And you think of, of films that, that, that do that for you. Or, you know, and films convey messages in different ways. Maybe the, the, it's, a, it's a point or a lesson or a day in the life or, you know, uh, you know, uh, there's so many different genres from westerns to uh, dramas to comedies to, to brighten our day, to make us laugh. You know, uh, there's so many different, uh, you know, uh, you know, things we, get, we, we go to the movies for. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're, we're going to be entertained. Get away for, for the world for a couple minutes and go be invited into uh, another world. And there's movies out there that have done a fantastic, a brilliant job at world building. And uh, some of those films have been so good, they become uh, either franchises, a, a three picture deal, or they have become a universe, you know. Uh, and we're talking about, you know, when you saw a film like... Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, when that came out, it, it built that whole the whole world like that, you know. Or if you saw in 1978, you, you saw the Star Wars. So Drew, George Lucas put together a whole world, you know, and you were engulfed into Luke and Leia and Han and Chewie, uh, you know, uh, you know, with the help of Obi Wan Kenobi, Yoda. You know, fighting the Empire of Darth Vader, uh, his stormtroopers, the Emperor, and all the bounty hunters from Boba Fett to Bosk to IG-88, all the different characters. And you're building these worlds, whether you're on the planet of Hoth or Tatooine, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it's amazing world building. And you, you, you enter the world and, you know, your first senses and the first shots of that movie... Uh, you know, uh, from the title, the title role is in space and the space moves and you see uh, Princess Leia's ship going and they have the huge Death Star and you're like, oh my gosh, what is this? And when you're a kid in 1978, you know, and seeing this for the first time, it blew your socks off, you know. 
you know, we have other films out there. Um, some folks are, you know, really like, uh, I'm a big fan of Ridley's, Sir Ridley Scott's work, uh, you know, whether, you know, it would be Alien or Blade Runner with Harrison Ford as well, you know, and, and that was, you think of the world building and, and you know, he, he, that, that pace was set, you know, in terms of uh, how we see sci-fi movies in a lot of ways from George Lucas to Ridley Scott, you know, or, you know, even for Alien, the first horror slash sci-fi film being blended together, you know, and, uh, you know, H.R. Geiger's, you know, drawings from the character designs to the ship and having that more organic feel in terms of that world building. And then we also have, you know, in more more recent times is you have the the Harry Potter, you know, universe of, of movies and, you know, what does it look like to be at Hogwarts or, you know, what does that world look like, you know, where we have mythical creatures and creatures of darkness and all sorts of stuff in there. Or you look in the high tech, uh, when the Wachowskis came out with uh, The Matrix for the first time. And you have this this world, the uh, virtual world that you're getting plugged into, and and uh, you know uh, that's that's a whole thing. Or you look at uh, Peter Jackson with the Lord of the Rings, you know, and you're building these worlds, whether it be the 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 elves, the dwarfs, Middle Earth, you know, Sauron, and you know, <clears throat> just the hobbits and hobbits, and you know, I mean, it, it's like you you have these fantastic worlds, and we love. <coughs> going into these worlds even if you're a fan of something like twilight you know and you have bella and you know all, all the characters from that i was just talking to somebody about twilight the other day and uh, you know but that's its own world you know and it has its own rules for its own world of how vampires work in that world or you have something like a uh, the movies like Blade, you know, Wesley Snipes' Blade movies. I think one of the biggest ones right now uh, is you look at uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and, you know, you're, you're, the world building that you're building from all this content from comics into superheroes and you have everything, you know, you're, you're, everything's building upon something else, but you have all these independent films all working together into the Avengers. You know, and I remember, uh, you know, in Avengers, the Infinity War, oh my goodness gracious, that was like, you know, you're building huge world building in terms of uh, Kevin Feige and, and going through that, you know, uh, and putting that all together with the various different directors, you know. Um, there's just so much, so much to it and so many, you know, you think of a, another world, like even for television, I know they're working on season five of Stranger Things, you know, you still have all these uh the, these worlds that you're building even today that were these 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 artists are creating these worlds for you the world of the upside down versus reality you know Zach just popped in there and said you know uh, Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park when Jurassic Park came out man that blew people away because you're thinking of the the world of Jurassic Park or the world of living in a, in a reality with dinosaurs again you know. Uh, for the latest film that just came out, I remember when the original, uh, you know, uh, Jurassic Park came out, and you know that was the first. Uh, they, I, I was used to dinosaurs all being sort of like a Ray Harryhausen, where everything was stop motion, or Phil Tippett with the the Tauntauns or the Rancor from the Star Wars trilogy, you know, the originals, or you know, and you sit there and you go, well, they brought in 3D graphics, and and that was the the most real dinosaurs that you'd seen at that time building a whole you know multi-movie series and now a universe as they've gone on with chris pratt and uh, bryce dallas howard you know just just absolutely phenomenal in terms of what what it is so there's a lot of world building out there that we draw from you know and there's still going to be more worlds and are you going to be one of those folks creating those future worlds uh and uh how would that look or even you know you sit there and look uh uh, you look at uh, Mad Max, the, the latest Mad Max, you know, and now you have Futuro, you know, Futurosa, Furiosa, excuse me, Furiosa coming out and, uh, you know, uh, and you have another world of that again. So anyway, 
Uh, back to the chat real quick. I had a couple people popped on. I just want to say hi to those good folks. So I have uh, Chauncey uh, Pierce. Hey, Paul, thank you for making these knowledge, knowledge gems. Cool. Hey, you're quite welcome. Thank you for watching, and thank you, Chauncey, for supporting the channel. Really uh, super appreciate uh, everybody taking the time to hang out with me. You know, I'm over here in my office studio just hanging out, talking pretty much to the computer screen, and I got two walls right here. So, you know, anybody that's that's commenting or, or asking questions and stuff like that, just it's a joy to me. So it feels like we have a, a dynamic conversation. But welcome, Chauncey. Appreciate you being here. Um, and then uh, Quentin, hello from Florida. Hey, how's the weather in Florida today, Quentin? I hope everything's good. That's what most of us people over here in, in the Pennsylvania area, we go south <laughs> and hang out with you in Florida. Uh, I love fishing in Florida too. Uh, anyway, cool. Um, okay, so let's get into to the world building. We've talked about worlds, and uh, the reason why I took so much time about it is we go to the movies to be entertained. We go to the movies to enter these worlds, you know. Uh, maybe it, it might be more realistic in a sense, and we're going to the big city or we're going to the farm, you know. You know, you, even, you know, as we talk about world building too, you sit there and look at world building like, a, you know, uh, the Batman, 1989 Batman that came out. And here you have Tim Burton creating a whole gothy sort of world. It was the first time we see, now we see it a little bit more but at the time it was the first time we ever saw that and you know with uh, Jack Nicholson and Michael Keaton and uh, you know and that uh, you know in Batman and Batman Returns with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and uh, you know uh, Danny DeVito and uh, Christopher Walken you know and uh, everybody in that film uh, cool stuff there you know uh, and then now he's coming out with the new Beetlejuice movie if you haven't seen the trailer for it and that's another world you know uh, the, the world of uh, Beetlejuice and you know, coming back into that world so uh, some cool stuff so how, how do we create these worlds how do, how do we do this stuff um, how, how do we look about it you know and sort of as we we look at these films and uh, have some fun with it um, I was watching another YouTube video and I, I thought it was a really cool idea and, and I know my wife and I when we talk about films and when we're watching a film we're like and this goes more into storytelling a little bit more but I always like it when there's like friends you know friends in the movie you know and uh, you know it's it, it's part of our community is as people we like hanging out with people you know especially people that have similar interests or we have uh, uh, we either work together or we, you know, uh, we have similar hobbies or similar mindsets or the same sports. And it, it's fun when you're, 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 you're going. And, and I think when you go to the movies and see a movie, it's, it's always, I always like seeing movies with friends, you know, uh, not necessarily that I'm watching with friends. I like watching movies with friends, but I think it's, it's when you're watching a movie, you want to be a part of their friendship. You want to be a part of their group, you know, who wouldn't want to be a, an Avenger, you know, and it's, you know, what character would you play? You know what I mean? Uh, you know, and, and it's fun. Or, uh, you know, if uh, Jean-Claude Van, Van Damme was in the Kumite, you know, would you be cheering for him in the audience? Are you a fan of his? Or are you, you know, are you, are you want to be hanging out with Paul Rudd, you know, or whatever character he's playing? I know uh, they're doing the, the latest Ghostbuster movie or Bill Murray and you're hanging out with Dan Aykroyd Burn, uh, Bill Murray and Ernie Hudson, and you know, do you want Annie Potts, and do you want to be hanging out with that crew? You know what I mean? It's like I, I think friend and friendship is always in. I, like I said, my wife and I are always talking about it. Oh, that was a good movie. Why was it a good movie? Well, there's a lot of friends in it, and uh, you know, and what type of adventure would you want to be hanging out with your friends? So you think about when, when you're when you're building these environments and you're building these characters and stuff like that for your stories. Um, you know, you'd be about your friends and. If you had a wacky road trip with your friends you know you what would you do you know what would be your wacky road trip and uh, what makes you want to follow along so some basics of, of uh, storytelling uh, that we're talking about but we we always want to go on a journey with our friends it's stinky sometimes going by yourself you know you know but you always have friends along the way and uh, even in the most extreme circumstances like something like a uh, uh, we, we look at Revenant, you know, if you haven't seen the movie Revenant and, uh, you know, you're sitting there and, and that, that person's going through all the trials and tribulations, doesn't have any good buddies with him, but he meets people along the way that help him 
uh, you know, in terms of uh, the the, the storyline and stuff. And that's what we want to. That's what we like seeing, you know. Uh, so, and if we think about those type of movies in the uh, what we're talking about in the you know in these environments that we're going to be creating, and uh, let's go back over here to Small Paul. So take some notes down as we're talking. Turn that off real quick. Shrink this down. Let's move this over a little bit. Okay. Zoom in. Get my blue pencil. Cool. There we go. And just make sure we can see it. Okay. So so one of the things we talk about is it's called world build world building okay we want to you know one of the things that we want to do is we want we want to All right. What happened here? And Paul, you already messed up here. Let's do this. Didn't put a layer down. That's what happened. Let's try this one more time. Do, 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 do. Okay. Okay. We're saying rural building. two hours friends on a journey okay and so with that said you know we think about the basics of, of story Okay, and everything will come together while we're talking about these things too. Is is we're storyboard artists, and story is key. And we even want to have story in our world building, in our establishing shots. We want to build those things in it. And you know, we pretty much there's there's the three arc story, even from the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, starting with storytelling. We first want to do the setup. Set up our story. Two, we have conflict. And three, we have the climax and resolution. Okay. And where the, the world building set is, is part of that portion right here. So this would be a 
is going to be your world building. It's part of your setup. What's this environment? Where are we at? Where it set me up. And, you know, when we're talking about films and we're talking about filmmaking, we're going over to a few different topics here and, and not just drawing, but we're going to get drawing in a second here. But um, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning this and we're talking about the, you know, the setup, the conflict and sort of the climax and resolution of uh, the story that we're trying to tell, we need to set it up. And I don't know about you, but when was the last time you watched a movie and you just pretty much went right into the action? Sometimes you just go right into the action. But if you're watching something like Star Wars, uh, Lord of the Rings, The Matrix, uh, uh, you know, Twilight, um, you know, you're, you're, you know, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, you're going to get put into this, this world. And how do you get in, how do you get put into the world? You're going to get put into this world with a variety of different images. And those are called, you know, those will be part of your establishing shots, you know, inviting you into that world. You know, what world are we in? Are we in space? Are we in the forest? You know, like in Twilight, the, the um, Northwest Forest. Are we in, uh, you know, uh, like uh, Zach, are we in Australia? Are we in the, uh, on, the, uh, in the, uh, on the Australian uh, Outback? Are we in New Zealand? You know, where are we? Are we in Europe? Or, or, you know, are we in India? You know, where are we? You know, and we're going to use, are we in the big city? Are we in New York? You know, are we in the San Francisco Bay Area? You know, are we in uh, China or Japan? Or where are we? You know, are we underwater? You know, is this an Aquaman movie or is this a movie that, that takes place under the water? Are we inside the human body, you know, uh, like the movie In Inner Space? Uh, I think it was a Meg Ryan, Dennis Quaid movie, Inner Space. Uh, you know, uh, where are we? You know, we need to establish uh, these uh, environments, you know, in terms of uh, what we're doing. And, uh, and we usually start these, uh, start off with these establishing shots. And so next time you're watching a film, watch how, the, how you're introduced into the film. You know, I, th I think Ridley Scott, when we're getting into the, the film Alien, you know, um, lots of establishing shots or Blade Runner, you know, even the latest Blade Runner movie that just came out not too long ago um, in more recent time, you know, and you're setting up with this um, this environment. You think of the original Blade Runner and it's always wet and raining and you have a beautiful, you know, big buildings that the corp the Tyrell Corporation is in. And then you have the small, everybody uh, on the streets with a nice Asian flair to everything and umbrellas and futuristic costumes and, and a lot of metal and wet objects all the time. And you have the, the noodle, the noodle shop and, you know, you have all the places where they're building all the human uh, android parts and things like that. And, and you're sitting there and you're getting a lot of shots, you know. And I, I know uh, Sir Ridley Scott is a fantastic artist and uh, does his own storyboards. Uh, and you can see a lot of them, uh, his recent films and things like that, even with Napoleon. But he, he does a very good job at bringing the viewer into this world where the shots that he sees in his mind's eye draws them down and, and weaves them together to sort of invite you into the story. So if you're thinking about it, most of your shots are e either a, a wide angle or an extreme wide, wide angle or a ultra wide angle lens, you know, on your, on your camera. And those shots are taking those, that, that, that imagery and inviting you in. And that's what that shot is, is meant for is, uh, is to, to, to build that world, invite the viewer into that world. And these are the rules within this world, you know, you should watch something like the matrix and, and it looks like the typical sort of gritty world, but there's this woman and she's wearing all leather and, and then all of a sudden the, the cops are ready to arrest her. She has her hands behind her neck, ready to get cuffed and does a couple martial art moves. And then when she jumped up and she's running, breaking all laws of gravity and running in the middle of the wall around, you're just like, whoa, what the heck did I just see? And you're talking about world building. That's what excites audiences and gets you going in terms of, uh, you know, 
getting you excited about a film and those things and that building that world and what are the rules of that world and and things like that so uh those are pretty cool and uh drop it in the chat what what movie did you watch either a while ago or in your history or recently that said wow that's a that they did a great job at introducing me into that world drop it in the chat for me let me know what you're thinking i've rattled off a bunch of films but what's in your mind's eye this is dynamic conversation my friends so uh throw it in there i know uh Zach mentioned uh, Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park. Uh, Quentin said the the weather. Uh, real quick on his little chat. Uh, the weather is great now. Finally warming up the 70s and 80s. It's starting to get a little bit of rain too. It sounds like it's raining anywhere, uh, Quentin. So cool. But yeah, but what it is? Drop in the chat. What movie is, is did you think did a great job of world building for you? Let me write that down. This could be a TV show too. Uh, I just started watching. Uh, I watched, uh, I think, half of the first episode of the uh, Peripheral uh, on Amazon. Now, what 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 gave you a great introduction into storytelling? I, I was watched. I think the the first episode of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, let's see, Wolf Midnight. Legend with Tom Cruise. Very cool, Wolf Midnight. Yeah, that's a good one. You sit there and look at that. Uh, that was the one with that big giant. Devil. Tim Curry played the devil in that one. Man, that was just that that, that that's a world build right there with the unicorn and the the, the uh, what do you call it the the creature the gremlin not the gremlin but the uh, wicked gob the goblin king or whatever in that. And they had that was some cool world building. Very very cool. Yeah, that's a good one. What else? What else you guys got? What other movies gave you? So Wolf Midnight threw in there Legend with Tom Cruise. Cool. I think I did a drawing of that devil a while ago. I don't know if that's on Instagram or not. Cool. Throw it in the chat, guys. Don't be shy. Okay. While well, we're waiting for a couple more comments, let's go back into... Yeah, the Goblin Blix. Yeah, that's right. That was his name. That thing was like evil, and it, it was all that. That was like some of the uh, really, you know, when I when I look at uh, movie makeup and practical effects and things like that. That I just remember, just he was, it was he was that character Blix was all black and gray and drippy. It looked real, man. That was really cool. Zach said, uh, "Never ending story series." Yeah, that was that was like. That was with the big, uh, the dragon, the, the furry dragon, and that was a cool movie too. Uh, never in Stranger Things. I, I, you know, what's interesting, even for a TV show, because I, I wasn't, I didn't catch Stranger Things until, what is it, season five now. I think about, I either caught it on, see, yeah, I think I caught it, the first time I watched it was like, like season What did I watch? No, we, we got, I, maybe I did watch it from the beginning. I didn't watch it when it came out originally. I watched it much later. Uh, my youngest son was a lot younger when it first came out, but uh, we watched it later from the beginning. And yeah, I, I think that concept of the the, the, ups, the upside down was just a cool idea. I just, you know, and it was always, always like particles floating in the air and stuff like that. Thought that was cool. Just it's a, it was a good good show. I, I I've enjoyed that Hopper and you know everybody in it and stuff. That was that was a cool show. Looking forward to seeing how they conclude it in season five. Um, so uh, Chauncey uh, says, uh, I know it's anime, but Princess Monoke, Monoke, cool. Yeah, I think like Spirit uh, Spirited Away. Um, what's the other one? The uh, 
uh, my uh, my cousin Totoro. Totoro. Uh, just you know, has some some cool stuff there. Um, and then uh, Yasai uh, threw in there uh, Men in Black. You and my wife get along just great. She loves the the, the Men in Black, and uh, especially the one where uh, Bro Brolin comes in to play. Uh, you know, I forgot which, which Jane, and I forgot which. Gosh, what was his character's name? Tommy Lee Jones' character's name. Yeah, she yeah she loves that so, and just uh likes that Quentin. Uh, the old Planet of the Apes world, Star Wars prequels, Young Justice animated show. Cool, I haven't seen the Young Justice yet, but the original uh, Planet of the Apes movie, yeah, uh, that was mind blowing in terms of the world they built and. Uh, I always refer to that film a lot when I'm thinking of storyboard sequences and things like that. And just real quick, I think I think out of all of the classic Hollywood movie actors, the most interesting person I ever got to meet uh, uh, was a star in that movie. And uh, I, 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 was, uh, I thought it was uh, amazing. I was over at the, uh, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was over by Universal city uh, you know in the los angeles area there's in a parking garage of all places and my wife and i were in a uh a parking garage and uh you know we were I, we we're going to dinner or doing something and then there's a an older couple walking towards us we were walking towards them and uh you know uh i i go and and my, i we, we both are gentlemen and we let our wives go first and pass by because there's only enough space to one person at a time and then I'm walking by I look up and who the heck is that is Charlton Heston and so I said so we sat and we chatted with Charlton Heston and I was just mind-blowing but anyways that was my Charlton Heston story so for for, for you uh you know talking about Planet of the Apes Quentin I, I think that out of all the you know classic Hollywood actors uh that was the most famous person uh that I actually got to meet and greet and say hello to and that, that was uh for those old uh you know uh actors that unfortunately aren't with us anymore but uh golden age guys that's that's awesome so um so chauncey says uh when i was foreseeing the whiz and how they went urbanized oz yeah no that was cool the whiz was big you know that was michael jackson and that was, that was cool, you know, um, and it's a different spin. You know, you take the, you know, Wizard of Oz and put a new flavor in it, and that, that was pretty popular at the time. Um, and Yasla, in anime like um, Mushoku, Tensei, and Rage, Bahamut world building is awesome. Yeah, no, you sit there and look at a lot of these uh, anime shows. I think the first, gosh, one I saw, gosh, I'm trying to go back. I think, I think it was the... Uh, I think it was my youngest brother. He got into Robotech when that first came out, and that was pretty cool world building. Um, and he was into the Voltron and all that stuff. Uh, to me, I think that the big first anime that was Ninja Scroll. I really enjoyed Ninja Scroll, and uh, I think like Ghost in the Shell and a lot of those uh, those flicks there, you know, uh, coming out and stuff. But anyway, okay, let's get into our world building. So we're talking about. We're having some great conversations, so keep it going. I, I love chatting, and we can chat about all sorts of stuff. But let's get in and do some action now. So we were talking about story and, you know, the world building there. And then uh, also, too, let's scroll that out a little bit, is let's draw a line in here and go like this. So part of that world building when we're working in film and things like that is you're going to do that with your establishing shot okay and usually the the, the, sh the establishing shot you're going to use a wide angle You're going to use a wide angle lens on that. So when you're drawing your storyboard, you're going to want to be thinking of a wide angle lens. And, you know, 
usually it's between a wide angle lens would be um, a regular wide angle lens would be anywhere from 35 millimeter you know we're, what we're talking about is the focal length you know uh, to 24 millimeter Uh, lens on on that camera or if you wanted to do like a ultra an ultra wide angle that would be probably you know like 24 to 18 millimeter you know on that lens and, and and you're, it's a short lens it's not a super long lens like a telephoto lens you're not going to get the, the the bokeh you would want to keep everything sort of in frame and in shot and as we're talking film language um you know that that that's pretty much what we're going to do so when i i challenge you to go back and watch some of the films that you you enjoy and that you've named over here from never ending story to you know men in black or you know, Legend or, you know, um, The Wiz or, you know, Star Wars prequels or whatever it might be. Watch how, how you enter into those films. Watch how the director, cinematographer, and all the creatives behind it bring you into that world and, and invite you in. What are the wide angle shots that they're using to, to get you immersed into that world and teach you the rules of that world, you know? and uh, how, how you have fun with that so cool so so how do we how do we do this you know how, how do we put this together now and and how do we get this done so let's go ahead and let's draw some boards okay everybody make sense put some notes in here Now we're going to sort of get a little bit into some concept design as we're talking. So so tips for building worlds. Okay, so we all start with a um, a rectangle, the picture plane or picture itself. Okay, so let's draw our picture picture plane real quick. How big this? Zach also said here, um, Akira. Oh yeah, when that that was a good flick. Phew. Okay, so here's our picture. Plane. Okay. So, do, 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 do. what happened there? I lost that part. Let's move that down here. T. 
tips for the world building. Okay. So I, I think for tips for, for world building, we need to know our, our linear perspectives. Okay. And that, that, and that could be one point, two point, three point, five point perspective, right? And like we spoke about on uh, Thursday night, is that linear perspective was it didn't exist before the Renaissance. And during the Renaissance, uh, they developed you know the the the, the, the perspective one point two point three point to give your paintings depth. You have a flat surface, okay? And here we have just our plain picture frame. And how how do we make a beautiful world with this just this box how do we make this flat box and we do, would do this with perspective and we would add distance you know in there by having a horizon line and if it was a single vanishing point here as we get closer to the camera, we, we made this environmental shot. We created a space, you know, here. And we could, you know, and we, we were talking about this the other day, and we could rotate this. Not do that right now. And we could either get this to make the, the world feel uneasy by doing a, a, a Dutch angle in this shot. Let me see, I can't see it. You know, you sit there and you do a Dutch angle you know, we have this Dutch angle shot and you're like, now my world is, is changing a little bit so we can do a different, different things, you know, you know, in terms of how, how we're doing this, you know, we can change this. Let me duplicate this layer. You know, if I grab this layer, transform, let's keep rotating that layer. getting different uh, uh, depth. Maybe this is underwater. We're underwater and we're a submarine or they see in the torpedo, you know, by just changing this perspective grid, you know, and that's where your linear perspective, and this is just a single point. This is just a one point perspective, you know, and you see the, you know, if we're, we're drawing real quick and you got the, uh, My layer, new layer. Let's just say we, we have the uh, Peter's going to go hit the ship or whatever, and the ship's underneath the, the water here. Let 
the ship is gonna it's big propellers you know and that torpedo is gonna go hit that ship or whatever so uh, by you changing your perspective your linear perspective you get different types of shots like I said we have this one here nope we have this one here we duplicate this one more time Duplicate that layer one more time. Get this back like this. So and what my point is of all this is that what we're doing is we're creating depth. And I think depth is really important to your drawings. So you want to create So you want to create depth in those drawings in terms of what you're doing. So, and, and that, that's sort of the, your key to, you know, creating these world environments and stuff. Um, Wolf Midnight says, I remember when my cousin uh, uh, snuck me in to see Dragon Slayer. Yeah, Dragon Slayer, phew, that, that movie blew my mind too. That was really, that dragon, that movie was super cool too. Uh, there's so many movies, you know, today we, we, um, we look at uh, digital effects, 3D effects and stuff, you know, ever since, you know, I think the first 3D, the movie that came out that had 3D in it was Young Sherlock Holmes. I believe that was the very first one that used 3D generated characters and art in it. And, uh, you know, then you had the J Jurassic Park and so many different, you know, it was, you know, you had Pixar movies coming out and all that stuff. Um, but, uh, Absolutely amazing stuff, but uh, you know, you sit back and look at the practical effects of, of these films, and you're like, "Pooh, wow!" Just blows you away. You know, looking at the artistry and, and what they came up with, so cool. Great call out. Yeah, that's another one of my favorites in there too. That was so cool. Okay, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to create depth in these shots. Whether I'm creating a when I'm world building, whether I'm creating a set from Blade Runner, I'm creating a shot for the Lord of the Rings, and those type of things. So let's let's play around with this a little bit more. Use this uh, sort of step here and get going. No way. So Wolf Midnight says, I have the dragon in storage. It was a gift from the guy who made the three dragons for the show. Wow, that that is awesome, man. If you ever can share a picture of that, I'd like to see that. That's super awesome, Wolf Midnight. Wow. Uh, that's super cool. Chauncey says, I think uh, that was the first movie I used to uh, that used uh, Go Motion to animate the dragon. Cool. Yeah, I was always a big fan of uh, Ray Harryhausen when the uh, they took the Hydra's teeth and put them in the ground. And, you know, I used to be a big, uh, what do you call it, back when I was a kid, uh, they had the monster movies all the time. Uh, you know, it was, it was super cool. But Ray Harryhausen, whether it be Jason the Argonauts, uh, you know, uh, some of the monster movies he created, uh, worked on the creatures, uh, Clash of the Titans, the original with, uh, you know, um, with Perseus fighting, you know, uh, the, the, the Kraken or whatever. And, uh, you know, you sit there or you have uh, 
you would also was it when I was talking about the re, uh, the Sinbad movies with the the skeleton, you know, just the Cyclops and dragon. It was just blew me away. Uh, Wolf Midnight says it is huge. I bet it is. Holy smoke! That is cool. Wow, that is amazing. <laughs> very very cool okay so let's talk about our our create our depth let's create our our imagery here in terms of uh how do we do this and, and how do we go forward with it okay so uh let's get a new let's duplicate our picture frame i'm gonna put it to the forefront here Let's go ahead and drop it down here. Get it away. What are you doing? And sort of have some fun. Okay, so now we're going to draw a little bit, and uh, let's let's see uh, what we're going to draw. Okay. So I'm looking at environments. I'm gonna draw. Okay, so let's go ahead and the same sort of technique we're gonna do here. Lay down a sort of a grid here. I'm going to use that rule of thirds a little bit and move that that way. As we're talking about this shot, I'm just sort of thinking out loud. I'm going to quickly outline something here. Drop this capacity down so we see it but it's not really bothering us I'm just sort of gonna rough in and sometimes what I do is I'll just I'll get my my uh, blacks Drop the opacity just a little bit. I'm just sort of thinking out loud. I'm just sort of, you know, how do I want that shot to work? And do something like this. Want some distance there. So we have the horizon line back over here a little bit. So we sort of got that going on. Drawing some sort of thing here. Sort of a canyon type of thing. As we're going back, maybe there's some sort of Thinking out loud right now. Some sort of city. I want this to go back into the. I don't know if it's underground or not. I'm just sort of thinking out loud a little bit. This designing you know I want it to be on the you know as we're talking about the shots and stuff talking about those uh, as I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking of those uh, the rule of thirds for composition so I'm using 
this like that grid like this just sort of thinking a little bit happen here so I want to just sort of make sure that this uh, landscape is right there I got it on the main thing right there okay so we can tr turn that off rule of thirds okay so we're having some fun okay then maybe behind it might layer in some color This tool here. I'm just thinking out loud as I'm creating this. Environment. What I'm trying not to do is try, trying to do some sort of fancy illustration. I'm just trying to get the the essence of our shot down. It'd be a lot easier if uh, if we were given some sort of uh, you know concept art or something to be working with this. So do it like that, we can do it. Just grab that layer.
Okay. I'm just thinking as I'm going through. Just thinking out loud while I'm creating this environment. And what you what you see me doing is when I'm when I'm throwing this sort of this imagery together and I'm just sort of blocking things out. I'm not trying to do a fancy drawing or anything like that. Uh, one of the, one of the things that I'm trying to do here is if you if you see the tones, I'm going from the darkest color to the lightest color in a sense and uh you know i think what helps to create depth in a in a, in a piece of uh artwork is uh it, you know it would be it would be uh atmospheric perspective so the way you sort of want to think about it is that anything that's closest to the viewer, the audience's eye, you're going to leave that as the, the, the darkest color, as the, the focus color. And as you you go go in in space uh, for your depth, your colors will get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter until they, they match the atmosphere or the color you choose for your atmosphere in terms of uh, your, your drawing that you're putting together real quick. We're doing this sort of quickly right now. Um, and we started off with the line art and we're using this atmospheric perspective to sort of create even more depth. So once we sort of have that image, you know, created, we can go and use this image and, and move it around, change it up, warp it, do all sorts of fun stuff with it to give yourself some dynamic shots out of this. Um, and this could be used for uh, a city, futuristic cityscape. Here we're doing some sort of uh, mountainous, uh, you know, um, uh, what do you call it, castle in the mountains type of thing uh, that I'm working on right now. But you can use it, this for a variety of different ways and uh, have some fun with it and uh, uh, see what you can do with it. I hope, I hope this is making sense and for, for those of you that are following along and drawing as well is uh, have some fun with it and uh, with that, that's what uh, besides your linear perspective it's your atmospheric perspective that is creating depth for you in your shots 
So, uh, you know, and giving you the, you're, you're faking out that you have a wide angle lens in terms of uh, what you're doing. Okay, let's get this big pull off. Go back to this shot. See the thing I can do. Let's get that. I'm just laying down these colors real quick. We're just showing space. So we see all the space going towards this area. 
And what we're trying to do is create that that, that visual that these lines are going off into the, the far, far, far distance. So I want those like we're going all the way into this world, you know, and that's that's where we're trying to create space. And let's say just thinking out loud right now. And let's say we can that right cliff that's closest to us. We could clear that out for us. As we're looking there. terms of what we're doing. There's some different techniques that we can use too, so. So the other thing I'm, I'm looking at too, when I'm, I'm developing this this particular sort of cave shot or whatever we're, do, we're doing here, is, is just have some fun with it. And uh, I can go ahead and just add some line art to this real quick. Something real light. Okay. Let me just see what we can do here. Gonna doodle in here real quick and just have yeah, this kingdom in the back real quick. Just gonna. Just creating this sort of city. We can add a little bit of that.
I'm not talking so much, just sort of drawing and creating this little I'm not going to notice that I was using the spray brush. Okay, so, so let's just say we have this sort of pseudo environment we put together. And so we talked about depth and we talked about, you know, uh, tips for the world building, create the depth. We talked about linear perspective. We've spoken about um, atmospheric perspective, you know, sort of showing that, um, you know, if we're trying to, to show even more depth, let's try this real quick, see how this would work. If I'm trying to create even more atmospheric perspective, let's try it. Get a big brush. Let's go even bigger. We're trying to create some depth in there.
something like that. And we we show some some depth in terms of uh, what we're doing there. I think another thing too is to add. back what I'm thinking is if I want some sort of character that's if I have some sort of character walking off into the distance here Zach asks, uh, hey Paul, up to this point, what has been your favorite film that you've worked on? Ah, oof. That's a good question. That's a really good question. Um, good, good, good question. I've had a lot of great experiences. I, I'm right now. There's there's a lot going on with uh, the entertainment industry and stuff like that going on. Uh, I'm looking forward. Uh, yeah, I'm I, actually. I think I, I'm looking forward to the future, and looking forward to the, the future future film project. Um, I remember the, 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 my first big, big project that I got to work on um, involved, uh, it, it was in, it, it's, a, it's a really good question because the, the first one I ever got to work on, I remember the first time I ever storyboarded and um, I was working at a company where we were taking um, fight footage and making short films we were filming we were doing all sorts of stuff but i was able to storyboard uh, a whole uh in the sense at the time it was like a, a sequence plus comic at the same time and that was uh i got to and uh, at the time i was using uh getting to use all the fight sequences from jackie chan's drunken master and um that was part of the the deal that they were trying to cut with Golden Harvest Communications. And I had one night to storyboard and put that project together, uh, get flown to Los Angeles the next day with the CEO of the company and pitch this deal. And I don't think I got any sleep. I worked all day at work and then at the studio and then stayed up all night put these storyboards together, put it all together, got the fight footage, did everything all in the same night and uh, went and pitched the deal the next morning in Los Angeles. And it was a heck of a, an adventure, uh, tested everything. I was so tired, but it was like I, I got the project done. Um, and at the time you didn't have all these Photoshop existed and stuff, but it's like we didn't use those tools like that digitally yet. You know, you're still drawing with a, a mouse. <laughs> and so I did everything by hand and paste up boards of all the storyboards, pitched the deal. And it was a crazy uh, 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 environment because I pitched it and I spoke in English and then it was uh, translated in Chinese and then back from Chinese to English, it went back and forth. And uh, I was able to secure the deal with my boards and uh, 
I'll never forget that experience. And uh, that was just the beginning. So, um, but I'm looking forward to uh, getting the call in uh, my next film. And uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to working on that. And uh, just exciting. I'm, it's an exciting time right now. I don't know uh, which way it's going to go right now. And uh, unfortunately, when, when, you, when you're working on these projects, you can't talk about the projects that you're working on. Uh, uh, and uh, not until they're announced and you get to see that footage. It's sort of a, when you're working on a, on a, on a film, you can't show your work and uh, you can't talk about it. And so it, it's, it's interesting. So um, more to come on that question, but I would say one of the pinnacle things is being able to do those, my very first storyboard job. And uh, that, that was a crazy experience. And uh, thrown right into the right into the shark pit on that one. So uh, I hope that answers your your question, Zach. And uh, I look forward to sharing when once things uh, are released uh, that we can share more from there. So looking forward to it. Okay, so back to the drawing. Okay, so I got this character right here. Let's flush this character a little tad more. Chauncey's all. I'm sure it is different for each production and with world building is concept art designed first and then you board from there or do you just go uh, by the script and the director's notes uh, good question chauncey um, um when it comes to that um i have seen it multiple different ways uh sometimes you're working on a project and nothing exists yet so you're in a sense doing some of the concept work and creating this stuff like we're sort of playing around. I'm not really using any inf reference. I'm just sort of playing with this and we'll see where it goes. Um, you know, or you'll have your concept designs already done and the concept artist gave you some world building. It gave you some vehicles, character designs. The characters haven't been, the actors haven't been uh, secured for the movie yet. Maybe there's the director and the cinematographer and uh, you're at the, the, the beginning stages there. Uh, maybe it's more flushed out on a, a studio piece, meaning for feature animation or animation. Uh, so there's some different things there. So, um, so like I said, Chauncey says, I'm sure it's different for each production. That's true. But with world building, is concept art. Yeah, it, go it goes both ways. Most of the time you do get the concept art and you do have some of those things. Sometimes you're responsible for sort of roughing it out and, uh, you know, telling the story and then um, adding that imagery. If we're talking feature animation or, or a cartoon, you're gonna be on model sheets. Those model sheets and those concepts of, you know, having all the turnarounds for SpongeBob SquarePants or uh, Rigby and Mordecai from, uh, you know, the regular show, you'll have all those there. And it's how well can you mimic the style and the um, designs that have been put together. Okay, so I was drawing this character here. I'm just sort of thinking in. Just thinking about this character and what this character is doing. So 
So when I'm creating um, a shot like this too, there's a couple other things because what we can do is we can move the shot. Maybe the, the shot will be expanded, you know, and go even wider and we can move that shot too as we're world building. But I, I think the first aspect I'm talking about is, is just building depth in your shot, you know, show some, like I said, atmospheric uh, perspective, some linear perspective and in terms of the shot. Uh, we got the blurred surface up here that's closest to the camera. You know, as we're going through, we got some sort of mist. We got this character walking in the shot there. I think it's, uh, you know, may make some interesting things with this particular you know, maybe it might be, you know, add some elements in it that, uh, sort of bring it to life a little bit. Maybe just sort of thinking out loud. Thinking some plants. See, there's some jungle vines. I'm just thinking out loud here. Just making this up as I go along. And I, and I think the other, the other, besides adding some extra stuff just to make it interesting, in terms of uh, this this world that we're sort of pretending to build here uh, would be like um, to, uh, when I look at the shot here it's like what 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 is this character doing is he hiking is he walking uh, what what where is he going you know how's how how is this working you know is is there more than just him you know is he too small. So if I duplicated him, turn one of them off. How do I, does he look too small for the world? Do we make him bigger? And now what's the, what's the story here? We have him here. Do we have other characters in front of him? Maybe there's some sort of guards that are taller than him.
I'm just thinking out loud here. sort of playing around with this. Are they bigger than him? What's the story we're trying to tell? This in this one shot. There's some sort of robot. sort of making this up as I go along here.
So we're telling a little bit of story here in this shot. Cool. Okay, friends. Let's see. It's about uh, almost two in the morning over here on my time. We've got a cool shot here. So we've talked about a little bit about world building, little futuristic uh, shot here. We've talked about uh, atmospheric perspective, a little bit of linear perspective in terms of the shot. Um, trying to put this together. See how that turned out here. I need some world building. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you're already provided with all this information. And you can just draw off based on those concepts. Or you could do sort of, you know, we're going to put some concept stuff together, have some fun with it, uh, change some lighting, and, and uh, have some fun, and, you, know, uh, you know, put it together. So world building can take all different types of forms uh, and you can sky's the limit on the imagination of, of where you can take your uh, environmental sort of concept design of what you're trying to do here um, so it's, it's a lot of fun I, I have fun you know putting this together we just sort of flew with it you know I would go and tune it up a little bit but it gives you the basic idea of uh, you know world building for your storyboards uh, maybe I might have a few establishing shots, you know, if I can even push this out even further, you know, before my character comes into the shot and have some fun with it. Uh, but uh, we sort of have this uh, sort of interesting shot that we put together and having some fun with. So I hope uh, everybody uh, had a great time tonight. Um, you know, hopefully we can go over this topic again one of these days, do some more images together. But I hope uh, everybody learned a lot today and uh, learned a little bit about filmmaking and, and that. So I just want to take a time to say thank you to all those that watched this on the live stream. Yo, Yazlai, thank you so much for joining in. Zach Smith, hey, thanks for joining in from Australia. I'm glad you finally made it. Um, you know, we had Chauncey uh, Pierce here. Thanks so much, Chauncey, for joining in. Uh, Quentin uh, from Florida joined in today. Wolf Midnight, always a pleasure. Love seeing. I love to see what some of those images. If you get that dragon's head of that dragon slayer dragon, that's awesome. <laughs> Zach Smith, cool. Good to see ya. Don't think I missed anybody. I think I got everybody. Yeah. Uh, I hope it was fun, Zach. Yeah, you're welcome. Great session. Yeah, I appreciate you doing it. So if you guys enjoyed yourself tonight, uh, please take a moment and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. A lot of people watch. I, I do too. I watch a lot of YouTube videos and stuff, and sometimes I don't sub subscribe. You know, I'm not thinking about it at the time, but I'm watching, uh, you know, another person's channel all the time. So I, I appreciate you taking the time. Subscribe to the channel. Help support me. Help support this channel. I super appreciate that. Also with this video, if you enjoyed yourself tonight, I'm excited to see your concept work. I'll leave you with my contact information and feel free to uh, share with me at any time. And uh, I'll leave you with that contact information. But uh do drop a like and a comment into this particular uh, video. I sincerely appreciate it. It always helps out a lot and it lets the uh, YouTube algorithm, uh, you know, push this content out to other uh, visual storytellers, storyboard artists, filmmakers, and artists, and pushes this content out. So I really appreciate your support helping, uh, you know, reach other folks too. That might be useful to them as they're uh, starting their journey in uh, visual storytelling, whether it be for comics, animation, live action, your YouTube videos, corporate videos, music videos, and all that different type of stuff. So again, thanks so much for watching. It means the world to me for you guys to hang out and uh, have this sort of time to get going. Uh, again, Wolf Midnight, I hope it was great. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Zach Smith, thanks so much. Uh, Yazlai says, thanks for the great stream. Chauncey uh, Pierce, thanks so much. Appreciate you all joining. You guys have a great rest of your weekend. I will see you on Monday night for our Mastering the Basic series. Till then, keep drawing, keep telling your stories, and making an impact in visual storytelling. I will see you in the next video. I'll leave you with my contact information, but have a great night. Bye, everybody. Take care.